Polkadot versus Cosmos, two of the biggest blockchain interoperability projects out there. But which one is better? And which one is going to dominate in a multi-chain world? Well, to answer these questions, I dove deep into both projects and compared them across seven different categories, such as tech, adoption, tokenomics, etc. So in this video, let's go through each of those categories to see who wins, and then I'll share my final verdict. All right, let's go. Category number one. I got to start with their tech and overall architecture. To be honest with you, I could spend an entire video on just this section, but in the interest of time, I'll try to keep it high level and gloss over some details here. Anyways, Polkadot utilizes a relay chain parachain model, while Cosmos utilizes a hub and zone model. They have some similarities, but their differences are quite important to dissect. Like for security, Polkadot famously shares security across all its parachains. So each parachain can do its own thing, but their blocks are ultimately finalized by the main relay chain. The benefit here is that they don't need to recruit their own validators and bootstrap their own security. Instead, they can rely on the highly secure relay chain with hundreds or even thousands of high quality validators. But on the other hand, those validators could theoretically decide to censor a parachain and keep their blocks from being included. Now Cosmos is quite different when it comes to security. Every blockchain or zone in their network is independent and secures itself. So they need to get their own validators and make sure that there's enough at stake. This is a pretty difficult task for smaller projects, but for larger ones, this is a huge selling point. Think about Binance. They want to have their own validators, so they have full control over their own chain. In terms of membership or who can join the network, Polkadot has a limited number of parachain slots. And to get one, you need to win an auction by staking the most DOT tokens. Whereas for Cosmos, anyone can build their own hub or zone. So for membership, Cosmos is more flexible than Polkadot. And it's the same for governance too. Polkadot has a unified governance approach, whereas Cosmos has no central set of rules and each hub and zone has its own governance process. Finally, in terms of consensus mechanism, Polkadot uses two different protocols called Babe and Grandpa, while Cosmos utilizes Tendermint. With Tendermint, each validator has to communicate with all others to approve or reject a block. The benefit here is that you have finality on a per block basis, but this also requires a ton of communication between all validators. So if you only have 100 validators, that's okay, but with thousands, it could bog down the network significantly. Polkadot's approach does not have the same issue because Grandpa does not need to wait for agreement on every single block. Instead, they reach agreements on overall chains rather than blocks. So that speeds up the process immensely. Now there's a lot more that we could discuss in terms of the tech and architecture, but I'm gonna stop right here and call this category a push between Polkadot and Cosmos because both of them are really well designed and have flexible architectures. So you really can't go wrong building on either one depending on your particular needs. Okay, so that was just my first category and we have six more to go, but don't worry because that was by far my longest one and the rest of these will be much shorter and quicker. Like my category number two, which is their developer ecosystems. And this matters a lot because ultimately, projects need great developers in order to succeed. Fortunately for both of these projects, they are doing extremely well in this category. Per this table, Polkadot and Cosmos are actually number two and number three in terms of projects with the most full-time developers as of December 2021. This data was grabbed from the Electric Capital's annual developer report, and it has some of the most in-depth analysis of developer activity that I've seen across the entire space. If we look closer at the data though, Polkadot has 75% more full-time devs compared to Cosmos. And this chart from Electric Capital shows that Polkadot reached their high number in way less time than Cosmos if you normalize for their launch dates. So for this category, I give the edge to Polkadot, but it is a slight edge because Cosmos is doing great here as well. Now my next category is all about the tokenomics of each project. But before we get to that, a quick shout out to our video sponsors, SX Network. They are the world's first layer two blockchain that's built on Polygon. Now, why would they wanna do that? Well, because Polygon has been struggling with congestion and higher fees lately. So SX Network decided to make their own chain using Polygon's SDK that's tailor-made for betting, DeFi, and NFT apps. I mentioned betting because they're actually the same team that created the popular SportX betting platform. And their chain is unique in that it has an on-chain community treasury and a native predictions market protocol, both of which are collectively managed by SX token holders. Yep, they have their own token, and it's used for gas fees, staking, and governance. 
The governance part is quite interesting because they controlled the funds and the treasury, which gets 55% of all tokens along with the fees generated by the protocol. Their SX token is already on a bunch of exchanges like Bitfinex and SushiSwap, and they have a growing list of businesses that are deploying on their blockchain. If you want to learn more about them, then definitely check out my links down below. All right, back to Polkadot vCosmos and category number three is token distribution. For this, we have our go-to Masari chart that I've shared so many times before. We see Polkadot with 33% of their initial tokens going to insiders like VCs and whales, while Cosmos only gave 22% to insiders. Cosmos also had way more of their initial supply going to the public sale, which you can tell by looking at the blue slice of their pie charts. So I like this a lot about Cosmos, but honestly, they're both way better on this aspect than Solana and Avalanche. Now on the other hand, you could make the argument that VCs investing in a project is a good thing because they will help support the project and it's also a vote of confidence. Well, if that's true, then Polkadot is better because they are the most owned asset across all the VC funds that Masari tracked. Out of 44 funds tracked, 19 of them held DOT, while only six held Atom, which is Cosmos' native token. Take that as you will, but personally, I prefer a more fair token distribution than VCs who may or may not pump our bags. Advantage, Cosmos in this category. Moving on, category number four is also tokenomics, but this time I want to see which token accrues value better. Like when the project has a ton of adoption and success, does that translate to the token price going up or no? Well, this is actually a big area of concern and a big misconception for Cosmos because there are some massive projects built using the Cosmos SDK, like Binance Chain, Terra with their Luna token, and also Crypto.com's Kronos Chain, but they don't actually need to use Atom at all in order to fully operate and do their thing. Those ecosystems can grow to be giants, even larger than Cosmos' own hub, and none of their success would benefit Atom token holders. That is, unless they connect to other blockchains through the Cosmos hub and do a lot of cross-blockchain activity, in which case Atom would be needed. But so far, we haven't seen much of that going on. On the other hand, Polkadot's parachain model has some interesting value accrual mechanisms, because projects need to win an auction in order to get a parachain slot. So they may do crowd loans where they raise a bunch of DOTS tokens, and if they win, all those DOT tokens are locked up for the duration of their lease, which is usually two years. These auctions have been going on for a couple months now, and so far they've resulted in over 100 million DOT tokens being locked up, with much more to come since these auctions will happen all year long. This is a massive amount of DOTS taken out of circulation, and all things held equal, that's insanely bullish from a supply and demand perspective. So for this category, Polkadot wins. Next up, category number five is DeFi adoption, like which project has a more robust DeFi ecosystem? To best determine this, we can look at the total value locked or TVL metric. If we look at DeFi Llama's stats, Polkadot has around 1.3 billion in TVL, while Cosmos has like 16 billion in TVL. But I don't think that's a fair comparison because they are including Cosmos SDK projects like Terra in that calculation. And like I said before, none of that activity really flows back to Cosmos. Either way, both of these projects are just getting started with their DeFi ecosystems. Like Polkadot's Parachains just launched a couple months ago, and their TVL is already growing rapidly. So I expect both of these numbers to be much higher when we revisit this at the end of this year. And for that reason, I'll give them a push in this category. All right, category number six is community interest. And for this, I'm looking at how active the community is and how much organic buzz is being generated about them. Because like it or not, this does affect a project's overall performance. Well, in terms of raw community size, Polkadot has more people following their Reddit, Telegram, and Twitter. If we compare them side by side using Lunar Crush, Polkadot also wins in terms of social volume, social engagement, and social dominance. I think one factor that could explain Polkadot's lead is that their founder, Dr. Gavin Wood, is way more recognized and respected across the crypto world. On the other hand, if you go ask some random crypto investor who the founders of Cosmos are, I bet you very few of them could tell you. Anyways, that's just a theory I have, but for this category, I have to give the edge to Polkadot. Last but not least, for category number seven, let's look at their ROI, or rather their price performance for the past year, just to see how the market viewed each project. Well, if we look at their stats on Masari, we see Polkadot here underperforming both ETH and BTC and just barely getting a gain versus USD in the past year. Whereas for Cosmos and Atom, it has dominated both ETH and BTC for not only the past year, but also the past few months. So just in terms of price action, Atom was the better play in 2021. 
But of course, this could be from a variety of reasons. Like they didn't launch at the exact same time. So perhaps they're on different parts of their growth cycles. And also past performance doesn't dictate the future. So I'm gonna give this category to Cosmos, but I wouldn't weigh it that much in my mind. Phew, that was a lot of categories to cover, but now it's time for my final verdict. So we had two that were pushes, two that were for Cosmos, and three that were for Polkadot. So Polkadot wins. I'm a superhero! I actually agree with this result because I lean towards Polkadot for their community support, for DOT's value accrual mechanisms, and because I absolutely love the technology and design. But that doesn't mean I'm down on Cosmos though. I think both are super promising and will be around in five to 10 years with massive ecosystems. What do you think though? Do you agree with my verdict in these categories? Or was there some other category that I should have included and compared them on that I did not? Just let me know in the comments down below. Also be sure to watch this video that I made about Solana versus Avalanche, which is also super thought provoking. Or this one about my forecast for Polkadot in 2022. I'll see you in the next one and cheers.